Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the next tutorial for UV mapping Korra from the hit show, The Legend of Korra, The Last Airbender. We have already UV mapped her head. We have UV mapped her body. Now I'm going to start UV mapping all of these, which is a huge mess. And let's get ready for the accessories. All right. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and continue UV mapping Korra. All right, so head's done, check, body's done, check. Let's go ahead and start working on these pieces. So I'm going to select them because I'm going to isolate select them. So I'm going to select this one. Oh, anything that I feel like needs to be UV mapped, I'm going to go ahead and grab them. And I might as well do the shoes as well. And then click on this little button up here to isolate select. Okay. Focus on one and then move from there. Uh, what I'm checking to see if it's hollow, and it is, so that makes my life easier. This is clearly a cylinder, so let's go to UV cylindrical mapping. And as always, the projection's going up and down, that's the default. The arm is going diagonal, so let's go ahead and close this. Click on that little red T and then click on this little manipulator and start rotating it. So what I'm looking at is my UVs over here to the right and also trying to view it on the left so that I can rotate it and try to get a square or some sort of rectangle. Might be a little challenging because this area is actually flat, but theoretically, if I can just kind of follow the mesh, I should actually get a pretty decent rectangle. Oh, there we go. Eh, that worked out. All right, let's move it aside. I still need to uh, unfold it and things like that, but that should get me started. So what I'm going to do is quickly um, do the same thing here. I'm going to click the letter G. I am going to close it. I'm going to click on this little red T. Again, click on that manipulator or that blue, blue manipulator so I can actually go in here. And again, the goal is to, oh, actually, it's almost done already. But uh, the idea is to try to get a, a rectangle or a square as much as possible. And I, actually, that was way easier than the other one. So that makes me happy. Well, I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. Again, they all still require some cutting and unfolding, but I'm going to uh, continue to unfold and then work from there. This one is also a cylindrical. So let's go ahead and do that. This one's easy because it's basically a cylinder. And this one's actually the same one. So what I'm gonna do is actually just unfold it. So select your faces, double click, shift right click, unfold, unfold. That looks decent. Let's take a look. That actually looks pretty good, okay. Um, and the cool thing is, is that I can actually transfer my UVs. So if it's the exact same model, I can easily transfer my UVs. So I'm gonna select this, shift select the other one that's not UV mapped. And then the magic area is, or the magic button to press is, it's under mesh, transfer attributes, options, and I'm gonna reset my settings, edit reset settings. And the only thing you have to click is component and then transfer and voila, they share the exact same space. All right, let's take a look at this one. UVs, cylindrical mapping, same story. Close it, click on that little T. I find UV mapping very relaxing personally. I think uh, there's something really nice about just UV mapping and just kind of playing around with the attributes and, you know, just kind of working things out and, you know, there's only so many buttons you can press for UV mapping. So uh, eventually you're gonna get the results. All right, oops, I did not mean to, let me go to object mode. UVs, again, there's lots of cylinders here. Uh, close this, whoop, click on that little red T. Again, click on the little manipulator and rotate it until it matches the best that you can. Try to make the projection look like the geometry, basically. And then once you have that, move it out of the way. Whoop, easy peasy, awesome, cylinders are great. All right, this is also a cylinder, so let's go ahead and UV this one. Whoop. Let's click on the little red T, because I actually don't want it to split on that so section. I want it to actually split on the front. The, the seam should be in the front. So let me rotate it so it's in there. There you go. And just like that. Now this is split, right? There is actually geometry. This is actually has thickness. So that's something that I'm going to have to cut and sew. Uh, same thing with this belt. Right, so the projection's in this direction. I'm gonna close it, click on the little red T, and then just make sure that you rotate 
the seam to the front. And you know that where the seam is is because of that red, um, red T and where you intersected it. Pink. So I'd rather have that in the front than in the back because the seam is gonna be hidden by this knot. So again, it's not perfect, but this will give me the, the start. Uh, this one's actually just a planar mapping. So UV's planar mapping options. Let's click on the Z. Again, if you're not sure which planar mapping to use, you can always just look over here at this small manipulator. I look at it at all the time to make sure that I can get the right projection. And this one's gonna be easy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and unfold all the way. Same thing with this one. Let's go back to object mode, select these two. Well, let's go ahead and do another planar mapping. You can shift right click, unfold, unfold, just because it's fast and easy, and there we go. All right, the boots are probably gonna be the more complicated ones, so let me just go ahead and start fixing my UVs. Let's just double click, unfold, unfold. And I'm gonna turn off the grid because I need to do a little cutting and sewing. You see this little stair step here, this little, this poor little tail sticking out of it? I don't want that. So I'm gonna hit one so I can see it in low poly. Click on that edge, shift right click, cut. Go to this side, click these two edges, and then we're going to stitch together. Double click, unfold, unfold. You're gonna see that it's kind of like rinse and repeat a lot, <laughs> which, is, which is fine. Another thing is to check where your seam is. In this case, it's in the back of the arm, which is similar to the, uh, the back of the seam in the actual arm. So I think that's fine too. Let's go ahead and click on this one. Again, we can go to faces, shift right click, unfold, unfold, make some cuts. Again, I'm gonna press one just so I can see it a little clearer, double click. I got lucky because I actually want the seam to be right there, so I actually should, uh, I just double check to make sure. All right, cool. We want the seam to be in the back of the arm, just like everything else. So shift right click, stitch together. Faces, unfold, unfold. Wee, cool. Move that out of the way. If you wanna see what it looks like so far, voila, looks good. These I think are already done. Next, again, faces. Shift right click, unfold, unfold. Seems in the back. Uh, let me press the number one. I could potentially move it a little lower, which I think I will. So I'm gonna double click here. I'm gonna cut, and then I am going to stitch together. Face this, unfold, unfold. Turn off the grid, because it's a little hard to see, and these guys need to be sewn. So let's see, so, and so, there you go. Unfold, unfold, Whee. look at that. Ooh la la, so exciting. Okay, you, press one. Again, shift right click, unfold, unfold. I'm not too worried about this one. It would be good if the edge was at the bottom, which it is. So that's actually, again, I got lucky. <laughs> uh, or is it skill? No, nah, just luck. Let's see. Stitch together. And then of course, anytime I make any changes with UVs, I always unfold just to be, just to make sure. Okay, this one, let's object mode. Don't forget to save. Really important to save <laughs> and also save iterations. I see so many students actually not save iteration and it makes me really nervous because they just keep saving over and over and over and on the same file. And it's like, you know, uh, being on thin ice. You're like, please, please, <laughs> please save iterations because your file can't get corrupted. And I'm talking about almost every file out there can get corrupted. So iterations are really important. Even more documents get corrupted. So it's really important just to get into the habit of it. Uh, let's cut, move aside. I'm gonna just go ahead and double click on these and then shift right click, unfold, unfold. There we go. And then uh, if you like, you can just go ahead and sew it. It's up to you which side you wanna sew. Or another thing that you can do so that you can avoid this seam right here is put the seam in the back right here. So I might actually do that. I am going to cut here and then I'm going to sew the edges. So stitch together. 
stitch together. There we go. Unfold, unfold. Voila. So now the seam's actually right here, and no one's going to see it because, you know, Cora's body's in the way, so that should be good. All right, this one's interesting. Let's go ahead and unfold, and let's hope it gives us better results. Unfold. Okay, so for this particular one, I always find very interesting is that you can see that this is actually straight, but it, the UVs get curved, right? So what we can do is straighten it. We can straighten the UV so it's easier to texture. Now I'm gonna be using substance painter, so I'm not really too worried about it, but I would like my textures to actually be going the same direction. And right now they're not. So no matter how much I try to rotate this, my textures are never gonna be straight. So there are ways we can straighten the UVs and there is a button called straighten UVs. Right, so let's uh, let's grab the UVs and see if, if we click on it. So it's straightening them 45 degrees and in a straight line. So let me grab these UVs and actually rotate them. And then I'm gonna click the straighten UVs again. All right, let's go ahead and straighten UVs and as you can see, sometimes it gets stretched. We can click on the straighten shell and there we go. It'll be really easy because if I put a leather texture on here, it's going to look really great and I don't have to worry about warping it or anything. The texture is going to be straight. So, uh, all right, these have already been UV map, save. And we are ready to move on to the boots. Okay, so the boots and feet in general are can be pretty complicated because we, you know we have planers, we have cylindrical, and we also have planer at the top, which is basically how I'm going to be tackling this. Now, one thing you can try to do is just UV map cylindrical, and then see if you can unfold it and see what results you get. And as you can see, some of the grid's really big, some of it's small, and especially really not so hot at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is actually planner map the bottom. Oop. So I'm just selecting faces, and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go to UVs, planner mapping options. I'm going to use the Y and apply. It is going to be upside down, but that's okay. I can easily flip it, uh, shift, right click, flip. I always like to unfold, unfold, and I'm going to unfold this one too. So you can see that the grid is way better now. The seams in the back, which is perfect. And actually, that's, this isn't so bad. I really get impressed sometimes with, my, with the UVs. There is a little bit of pulling here. So these are the type of decisions you're going to have to make, which is are, if your character's foot is going to be in front of the camera, then you need to fix this. If my character is basically just going to be seen like this doing crazy moves, which is the master plan for this character, um, I'm not too worried about the UVs right there. So and by the way, if this was like I was working for a client and this was like an industry thing, then boy, would I make sure everything was perfect. So make sure that if you're working with a client or anything like that to please let's cut this. Uh, make sure that it's as, as perfect as possible because they're paying you to do it. So shift right click, stitch together and let's go ahead and UV unfold, unfold. All right. Let's take a look at it again. A little stretching here, but overall it looks pretty good. Wee, nice. All right, it's the same boot, but it's mirrored. So I'm gonna show you something interesting. So I wanna transfer my UVs from this boot to this boot, but this one's actually mirrored. Now the thing about transferring UVs, if I go to mesh transfer UV attributes options and I select a component like I usually do, component, and apply, it splits it into a thousand pieces and or every, basically every face is now a separate shell, as you can see here, which is no bueno. However, this is the same geometry, so we do have an option called topology. So instead of choosing component, select topology. So click on this one, shift select that one, select topology and apply, and voila, you now have UVs. So now we can, again, we can try unfolding, see how it goes. It looks better, and we are now done with all the accessories. Okay, cool. Let's go to object mode, select everything. Looks pretty good. All right, 
I'm going to go ahead and center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformations. All right, let's go ahead and get that texel density going. So let's go to transform. We are going to make a 2K map. Let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and set. Voila. And now we're gonna scroll down and we are going to go to layout and click on layout. Voila. So you can see that it did, you know, a decent job. It keeps the grid size the same and everything, which is very important. But um, I definitely can use more of that zero to one space. We want to maximize a zero to one space because this is texture information that can be useful for your overall character. Or what we could also do is wiggle some of these things around. So for example, maybe I'll rotate this and just kind of plug it in here. And what we can also try to do is put something else here. So for example, maybe I can add the hair. So instead of having four texture maps, which includes just the hair, face, the accessories and the clothing, I can just have the hair as well in here. So that is what I'm gonna do in the next video tutorial. So in this one, we covered all the accessories. Next time I'm going to go ahead and UV map the hair and place it in this space so that instead of having three shaders or three texture maps or four texture maps, I'm only gonna have three. And those three is the head, the body, and the accessories with the hair. Almost done, everybody. Very exciting. I'm super pumped because the next part is going to be to texture where the real magic happens. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I will do my best to answer them. If you make any type of comments, I may not be able to respond, but I do read them and I'm really grateful for you leaving a comment. If you learned a thing or two or you like these type of videos and you want to see more, please like and of course subscribe. That is your message to me letting me know that you like this type of content and that you want to see more. Also feel free to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free resources just for you that includes free 3D models, references, ebooks, and more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and if you want to support me further, please purchase an e-course. Those are deep dives into Maya modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and rendering. So if you want to learn how to create a still life or the Tower of Pisa or even a chess set and when you animate it and shade it, it's they're really intense courses. So that would be amazing if you would purchase one. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Keep creating and I will see you next time when we start UV mapping Cora's hair.